to Breakfast with Friends. Welcome to it, ladies and gentlemen. And this morning, at this very particular moment, we say welcome and thank you for your time. Stefan, how are you doing this Thursday morning? Good morning, Jonathan and team. Um, thank you for having me here this morning. Um, it is a huge... A huge pleasure, Stefan. We're looking forward to hearing your personal testimony. So, Stefan, among other things and accomplishments, is also a husband of Nastasha and a father yes. and a yes. child of God. Today, it's about your personal testimony. Stefan, please share with us. Yes, yeah, yes. Um, Jonathan, just background I grew up here in the northern suburbs in your typical Afrikaans blue-collar household. Um, we were Christian by association, I think, culturally. Um, Christians, but we didn't really practice Christianity in, in, in my home. Um, there was no value for, for Christ except for the cultural norm. And um, as you can imagine, a house without Christ is, is usually a house with some, some ups and downs. And those ups and downs actually shaped shaped me in a massive way because on, on a young age I started to 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 ease my pain my emotional pain and hurts by eating so actually from a very young age I would I actually got obese so and um, I think I weighed like a hundred kilograms before I was even 10 so I was extremely obese and that obviously had a massive social impact for me at school um being uh, rejected i felt a lot of rejection um peer rejection growing up um i was excluded to, um, to a lot of things and invitations and all of those things so i always felt like i didn't really uh, i'm not accepted and i think from the people that i was craving acceptance i i got rejected and ironically enough the people that actually wanted to have a relationship with me i rejected so it was just as just, just this space of being lonely, feeling alone, fighting for myself. And in the process growing up, going to high school, this just continued. And um, due to some events, I also, my heart grew um, hard towards my earthly father, um, a lot of resentment towards him. So I, I really actually became angry and, uh, as, a, as, a, as a child in my childhood. And... Um, and, and and lonely, and I didn't. I had a very passive lifestyle, Jonathan. I would spend weekends behind the P, uh, um, the TV, and didn't do much. I, I felt like, in, in hindsight, it felt like I was living a life, but I wasn't participating. In it. I was just going through the motions. Um, so, but at the end of high school, I actually started um, drinking with friends, and that was actually the first time I kind of felt accepted. I think. Um, I, I, my God, I let my God go and people started accepting me. And that was something new for me at that stage. It felt like people really accepting me for, for once. Um, but unfortunately, that lifestyle was not a sustainable lifestyle. So going into varsity, I had to rely upon the party atmosphere to really feel loved or accepted. But unfortunately, the next day at rest, you still had to get up and face people. And that insecurity within myself was still there. Um, and as you can imagine, feeling like that, feeling uh, like an outcast and not accepted and you're out being running towards food, it's like a cycle because the one feeds the other. So I was just caught in this space. And eventually, <clears throat> I would say ac actually finding myself depressed. Um, my second year as an engineering student, I would spend the whole day just watching, binge watching series, just spending my room. Um, the party vibe, I actually... I'm actually very grateful for Christ because I think I could have run to different things, but I, I ran to 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 solitude, if it makes sense, not in a, in a good way, um, just hiding from the world and feeding yeah. my myself with TV and television. And then one at the end of my second year, we had a house church at our res, and we invited. Uh, it was a combined service with a, a ladies' um, uh, residence. And I only attended that day. I went to church because there was going to be ladies. Not like I was going to chat to them, but that was, <laughs> what, that, that was what drew me there. <clears throat> and a guy there stood up and he shared his testimony that day. And it felt like he had his, he had his 
similar experience in life. He also didn't experience a lot of hope, um, felt defeated, felt alone, rejected, um, had pains with his father, with his earthly father. And I remember just hearing this um, and, and I could relate. And he shared a message of how Christ changed his life. He shared of the moment he accepted Christ as his Lord and Savior, how Christ has started to redeem and restore his heart and his relationships. And I remember at the end of that service, he asked, who wants to receive Christ as the Lord and Savior? And I remember my heart just pounding like heavily, knowing that I have to say, yes, this is my out. Realizing for the first time, there's a hope for me in Christ Jesus. Um, I was almost too scared to put up my hand because I knew there was going to be people that's going to see it. So, but the, the battle, I'm so grateful for Christ. The battle was won and I, I said yes and I put up my hand and I went forward and I actually prayed the prayer of salvation that day and the prayer of repentance. And God came and changed everything. It was the 19th of October, 2008, Jonathan, and nothing has ever been the same again in my life. Yes, God completely changed me he completely changed me i can today it's 15 years later i can share stories about just physically i actually within the first year of receiving christ as my lord and savior how i lost like 30 kilograms without trying from going from this heavily obese place to actually being set free just immediately that's one of the first things god did he just set me free from this reliance on food for emotional um for emotional out um, I just lost weight, but more so that God started um, renewing my mind, my self-image, my self-worth <clears throat> through the reading of Scripture, through through the Holy Spirit. God just spoke into my identity over the years, um, and it wasn't some of the things weren't, weren't a quick process, but just continually being and spending time with God. He's shaped my mind. He's renewed my mind. Um, I can share testimonies of how God came in and he restored my relationship with my dad. He led me into prayers of um, forgiveness. How uh, continually he led me to, to be merciful and gracious towards my dad when I felt like I got hurt again. And that in itself was a process of a couple of years. But, but the reward was my dad ended up actually giving his life to Christ, getting baptized. And although he's not alive today, I know he is in heaven. Um, Jonathan, I can t tell you testimonies of going on the mission field, seeing crazy stuff. But the biggest thing I want to share today is that 15 years later, God is still my only hope. And, um, and I can get up every day and I can face new challenges and new seasons because I know that in Christ Jesus, I have a hope. I have a future. I, can't, I can participate in life. Um, the Bible says faith is the assurance of things hoped for. And I, I believe when I read the Bible, there's so much I can read, so many promises that I can hope for. And I can go to Christ and I can have a life. I currently have a life, a life in abundance because I can place my hope in Christ Jesus. And that's, a, that's actually the message I want to share today. Even in this past 15 years, um, in 2018, the doctors, um, <clears throat> October of 2018, the doctor said, Stefan, you, you won't be able to have children. Um, you, um, you've got a 3% chance of having a child. In that same month, my father passed away. In that same month, um, we moved from what I believe was a spiritual, almost like a greenhouse for us in East London. We moved to Cape Town, which felt like a desert place. And I, and I had to face adversary. I faced adversary. I had to, I had to go to Christ and say, listen, things aren't perfect now, Lord. What do I do now? And then just this process of holding my holding my Christ over and over again every month, facing a disappointment of not being pregnant, going in, sitting with, um, um, with Christ, chatting to him about it, and then trusting again, trusting again. Um, and... And sometimes being disappointed. Some, there were some months where I had sat in disappointment, maybe in a change of season, and also losing my father just to hurt. But God's been gracious. He's in this process. The, the word says, I hope the third makes the heart grow sick. And um, 
God has been gracious to, to engage with me in those places where I, the hope was deferred, to heal my heart and re to restore it. And as, as you know, Nastasha said yesterday, we actually got fell pregnant. We had our, um, our first child, our Lily. She's two and a half years old. And it was such a gift from God. But even now, Jonathan, we're still trusting for, for more children. And in this Amen. process, just monthly having hope again in Christ Jesus, that he says who he is, says he mm. is, that he will do what he has promised to do in his word and through his spirit. And that's my, I want to encourage people today. If you find yourself in a position, God is faithful. After 15 years, I can, I, I want to urge you, go to Christ Jesus, go sit at his feet. Even if it's hope deferred, even if your heart feels sick, we can approach our father through the blood of Jesus Christ and he will engage with us and he will heal and restore and redeem us. Yeah. Beautiful. So sure. that is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. Really appreciate it, Stefan. I mean, so encouraging. And just thinking about, you know, as you said in your testimony, there were so many things that you could have run to, to yeah. because you were hurting inside, because you were feeling so bad about how you looked and how you felt and everything like that. Um, and God met you in that space, hey? He met me, and he, and he changed my life. And he was faithful. He was faithful. Oh, and he still praise is. Praise God, and he still is. Amen. Amen. Well, <laughs> yeah. Mm. Stefan, oh, it is so beautiful. Can I ask you to pray for us? Because I know that there are individuals who have listened, have heard your testimony, and they're struggling with some form of self-rejection, self-hurt, mm. uh, pain, and so forth. Would you pray as the Spirit leads you? Yes, our Lord. Thanks, Jonathan. Oh, Lord, I, I thank you as my, as my Savior, as our Savior, Lord. I know you are faithful to to restore, to redeem, and to heal us, Lord God. I pray for every broken heart, Lord, every insecurity, every insecure heart out there, Lord. I pray for the individuals for faith to rise up, to come to you, Lord, to come to your presence and to bring it to you, Lord. And I ask for your spirit to come and meet them and bring forth healing, Lord. There's healing in your wings, Lord. I pray that you will heal those hearts, Lord, that you will renew those minds, Lord, that you will restore them in Christ Jesus through the blood of Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Stefan, thank you so, so much for sharing so honestly and so beautifully with us this morning. Um and again, it's a it's a journey, hey? And we yes. we're not but we walk with God and we walk as He guides us and leads us. Amen. Thank you so much. Stefan, uh, we we definitely going to have to talk to you again. Uh, one of the songs that's been in my heart since early this morning is this one from Lauren Daigle. It's You Say. <laughs> <laughs>